Well, back to this afternoon, and now the Saturday play, which is an adaptation of Tim Crubbe's cult novella, The Vanishing. Starring Samuel West, it's a dark and at times disturbing psychological thriller about love and obsession, dramatised for radio by Oliver Emanuel. The Vanishing. My name is Rex Hoffman. I'm 38 years old and I live in Amsterdam. Eight years ago, my girlfriend, Saskia Elvis, disappeared. This morning, I saw some words on a car window in the street, scrawled in the dust. The words read, Rex, you're so sweet, love S. S. S for Saskia. Is it her? Could it be? My turn. Your turn? It is. I won the last one. Did you? I don't remember. Saskia, you're such a cheat. OK, so... Animals beginning with M. Monkey. Marmoset. Mm, nice one. Mm. Mouse. Moose. Magpie. Monster. You can't have monster. Why not? Well, it's not an animal. There aren't any monsters in the zoo, are there? Why do you always have to be so literal, Rex? It's a game. It's only fun if you play by the rules. I can't oh. play with you when you're like this. Oh, I'm sorry. Did someone say something? I fell asleep. <laughs> Peel me an orange. Please. I'm driving. I've been driving all day. If you want to drive, you're more than welcome. Please. What was the point of my paying for all those lessons? You haven't driven a single mile. Please. What? Please. Please. <clears throat> what are you doing? Peeling you an orange. You're not in my arm. I'm taking a look at the gauge. We just filled up. I was just taking a look. Well, if you drive, you can get a much better look. I just don't want to run out. Not this again, please. I had to spend three hours in that tunnel. I said I was sorry. You left me. I was so scared. We're not going to run out. I thought I was going to die. We've been over and over this, Sus. I won't leave you again. Promise? I promise. When I was little, I had this dream about being locked in a golden egg. I was flying through space. There weren't any planets or stars. It was just black and I was floating and I couldn't die. There was only one hope. There was one other golden egg. If, if we could somehow meet, crash into each other, both eggs would be destroyed and it would be over. But space, space is so big. Look, there's a petrol station up ahead. Do you want to stop? I don't mind. Look, speak now or we'll miss the exit. Whatever you like. I give up. Peace. Peace. Why do we argue? It's how we express our love. <laughs> That's true. If we loved each other less, we wouldn't do it. There must be easier ways. <laughs> Why don't we rest for a while? We've still got an hour before we reach the hotel. Well, it'd be good for you. We haven't stopped since we left Paris. You said we were going to take it easy. Okay. Okay, great. Let's go and sit on the grass. What grass? That green bit beside the pumps. Really? It's covered in rubbish. Oh, you're so negative, Rex. It's a little oasis in a crazy world. Come on. What's the matter? <laughs> Why are you hobbling like that? I'm hobbling. My foot's tired after the drive. Oh, poor Rex. That's it. Get you. Please. Never. <laughs> I love you. Oh, I love you too. <laughs> and we're going to have a really great holiday. Yeah, I know. Let's bury a coin here. Sure. Oh, have you got a euro? Kiss it. Saskia. Kiss it. <laughs> and I'll kiss this one too. And um, we'll just put them under this post here. One, two, three, four. Eighth post from the left. Your lucky number. Exactly. There. Good? Good. And I'm going to drive the next stretch, okay? Okay. It's a deal. <laughs> 
But first, I want something cold to drink. What about you? A beer? Let me go. No, I want to. My treat. You just lie back, have a beer. <laughs> you don't have to drive now. The beer sounds great. Fantastic. Well, give me the keys. I want to get a feel of them before I start driving. You're a freak. Yep. Got any money? Affirmative, Captain. See you in a minute. Bye. Landscape by Rex Hoffman, entitled Total Petrol Station Containing Saskia, minutes before her first drive on the Autoroute du Soleil. That's nice. It's one for the grandkids. Come on, Sass. Where the hell are you? Excuse me. Sorry, I wondered if you'd seen my girlfriend. What does she look like? I have a picture on my mobile. Mm. No. Isn't her hair shorter now? Have you seen her? I saw her a little while ago. How long? Oh, I don't know. 20 minutes or so. She was by the coffee machine, then came over to get some change. Have you tried calling her? Yeah, she left her phone in the car. I, I don't understand. She wasn't buying coffee. She was getting beer. Oh, she was definitely asking for change for the machine. OK, OK. Was she alone? Was anyone with her? It's possible. Who? Well, there was a family, I think. Uh, and a man with a sling. I can't be sure. Hundreds of people come in here every day. She's disappeared. I, I don't know what to do. Saskia? Sas? Is that you? Where the hell have you been? I've been going out of my mind. I, oh. Do I know you? No, I'm, uh, I'm so sorry. I thought you were... You look just like... Have you lost someone? Yes, you, you have the same hair. When I saw you standing by the car, I thought... Damn it, I really thought... Are you all right? No, actually, I'm not. I can't believe this is happening. Have you seen another woman with red hair? In her mid-twenties, a, a bit taller? No, I've not seen anybody. Who's hey, manager? Can I help you? I need to see your CCTV. Eh? I need to see your CCTV. My girlfriend came in here and now she's disappeared. I can't show you that. You have to. She's gone. No, I, I mean, I can't. The cameras have been broken since last Friday. <sighs> I've called the bloke in, but he won't get to us till the end of the month. What should I do? Oh, you should sit down. Take a minute. You look terrible. I can't sit down. I have to find her. Uh, did you have a fight? No. Are you sure? We didn't have a fight. What happened, exactly? Go from the beginning. We're going on holiday together to a place near Yer. We left Amsterdam this morning and have been on the autoroute all day. We just stopped for a break. She came in to get some drinks. That was almost an hour ago. I've asked the cashier, checked the toilets, looked all around the shop and outside. Nobody knows where she is. She's vanished off the face of the earth. She'll come back. What if she doesn't? What if something terrible has happened? What if she's been dragged into a truck and raped? What if they just dump her in the middle of nowhere? Shush, shush now. You don't want to think like that, man. I said I wouldn't leave her. I promise. Listen. You can keep in my office, if you like. You look done in. Put your head down. If anything happens, if she shows up, I'll wake you. But I... It's late. There's nothing you can do now. Just sleep, my friend. Hmm? Sleep. Oh. Please. Rex. Please. Rex, darling. Wake up, Rex. Rex. You were having a nightmare. Was I? Poor love, you're absolutely covered in sweat. You're shaking. What's happening? You're just confused. Look at me. Hello. What's your name? Rex Hoffman. What's my name? Nina Gavan Boston. What's the name of the Prime Minister? Jan Peter Borkenader. Where are we? Uh, at my flat at Bottenville at Amsterdam. What day is it? Sunday. <laughs> I think you're OK. I'm OK. <laughs> Here, have some more water. Thanks. <sighs> Where were you? I was in the egg again. I was in the golden egg. I was trying to get out. I was kicking and punching, but it wouldn't crack. It wouldn't even budge. I screamed for help, but no one heard me. No one came. Poor Rex. 
don't know why I keep having the same dream. Why you're awake now. Mm? You're safe. You're safe with me. <laughs> what time is it? Early. It's uh, just after six. <laughs> do you want to try and sleep some more? I don't know if I can. So do you want to go and get some breakfast? Do you feel better now? Much. Did you sleep at all? I suppose I must have done. Oh. Hello. I'm fine, Lena again. You should see a doctor, Rex. I used to be able to sleep. I used to be a brilliant sleeper. I could sleep through anything. I don't know what happened. Yeah, well, if you say so. Anyway, it's a beautiful day, and I'm with a beautiful woman having a beautiful breakfast <laughs> in a beautiful city. What could be better? <laughs> Such a charmer, Rex Hoffman. <laughs> Why are you looking at me funny? I'm not. You know you are. Stop it. What kind of a funny look am I giving you? The kind of look where you're weighing me up, measuring me, like you're trying to decide whether you're wasting your time. That wasn't what I was thinking. OK, then what were you thinking? I was thinking about getting married. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, OK. <laughs> I was thinking that I'm crazy enough to marry you. Just don't know whether you're crazy enough to marry me. I'm, I'm probably crazy enough. <laughs> so maybe we should get married. Right. <laughs> mm. Real conversation killers, these marriage proposals. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Do you want another coffee? I'm OK. Shall we play your word game? Animals beginning with K. Was Saskia in your nightmare? How did you know? You were talking in your sleep. Was I? Yes. Didn't realise. Do you think about her a lot? Every day. At some point. I see her sometimes too. Really? Mm. Just out of the corner of my eye. She's never in focus. If I turn too quickly, she vanishes again. But can you, can you see her now? Yes, actually. Where is she? On the other side of the square. Beneath the awning of that restaurant. Do you see her? No, there's no one there, Rex. Of course not. It's just my imagination. <laughs> Did you two ever talk about getting married? Oh, sure. But only as a joke. She was too young. She was only a few years younger than me. Yeah, but you're a totally different person, Lenica. And I'm a different person now. We would have got married. And divorced, too, probably. Or not. It's difficult to say. I'm always a little scared to ask about her. Scared? I'm scared I'll just ask silly questions. You can ask me silly questions. OK. Do you carry a picture of her? That's not silly. Yes. Do I ever look at it? No. Where do you keep it? In my wallet. Can I see? She's lovely. I like her hair. It used to be even brighter than that. The photographs faded over the years. What colour are her eyes? I can't quite make them out. Green. Bright green. <laughs> like a cat. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you for showing me. Mm. Does it make you jealous? No, I don't get jealous, Rex. <laughs> I think I would be jealous. What was she actually like? She was like herself. A unique individual. Pretty and sexy, I guess. But not easy. She was quite vain. Always checking herself in mirrors or shop windows or whatever. She liked computer games. And vacuuming. Because of the way that the cord zoomed back into its slot, stupid really. You loved her. Very much. More than you love me? Differently. You know, I think you feel love more easily through pain. How do you mean? Let's just say she never gave me a chance not to love her. 
Sometimes that makes me angry. Does it? Oh, yes. I, I did a, a, a bad thing once. <laughs> bad? I looked her up on the internet. <laughs> spent an entire weekend just looking through all the different articles and I think I was a little obsessed. That's not bad. I felt bad. You should have asked me. I have a file. And I was scared too. It would have been no problem. I don't mind at all. You said it was okay to ask silly questions. Do you hope sometimes that she'll come back? No. I often imagine it. But it's always kind of disappointing. As if I've lived the eight years since she disappeared for nothing. Rex... Let me tell you something. If she came back, I'd stay with you. But if I could go back to that petrol station in France, I would. It's not easy to hear, maybe, but I'm just being honest. There's no point having the conversation otherwise. That's OK. Do you know the worst thing? The not knowing. In front of a shop with two drinks in her hand and then gone. Bang. As though her atoms no longer belonged together, like the universe couldn't hold her anymore. Losing somebody is one thing, but not knowing... It's unbearable. You find ways of coping, of course. You play a game. You play a game where she's living happily somewhere, working as a waitress in Nice, or married with three kids and living around the corner, or whatever. Or you tell yourself she's dead. She's dead and gone. Maybe one day I will find out what really happened. Maybe. I, I just don't know. Now you're looking at me funny. Yes. What is it? I want to get married to you. Oh, I want to get married to you too. I want to get married to you, but you need to do something first. There's a catch. You need to find out what happened, Rex. Finally. If you could find out what happened to Saskia, you could breathe again. You could breathe again and sleep again and we could get on with our lives. Does that make any sense? Yes. And don't think this is easy for me to say. I just think that you need to do this. Right. Because you still love her, don't you? Yes. Do you love me too? You know I do. Do you know why I love you, Rex? Well, I've always assumed it must be my good looks and charm. <laughs> No, I, well, I mean, yes, those things, obviously, but I... I love you because you are open. You're so open, you're almost transparent. I can see your heart, Rex Hoffman. I can see your love. I can see it clearly. Oh, no, don't make me any promises. Just find out what happened. Then if we still want to, we can be together or get married or whatever, but no promises. I just have to wait and see. Good evening. Welcome to Journal. I'm Jean-Pierre Gallo. Tonight is a special edition. We will be exploring the terrible tragedy of the missing. People who are with us one day and the next disappear completely. Either abducted, kidnapped for ransom or simply vanish into thin air. We'll also be discussing the issues arising for those loved ones who are left behind. With me in the studio is my special guest, Rex Hoffman, a journalist from Amsterdam. Welcome to Journal, Rex. Thank you. Now, your story is unusual in that it began eight years ago. Do you want to tell us what happened? It's a simple story. My girlfriend Saskia Elvist and I were going on a cycling holiday to the south of France. We left Amsterdam by car in the afternoon of Thursday the 30th of July 2002. We arrived in Paris just after six in the evening and made our way south by way of the Autoroute du Soleil. Just outside Dijon, we took a break at a petrol station... I stayed with our car and bikes while Saskia went inside the shop to get us some drinks. I haven't seen her since. Extraordinary. Now, by chance, you took a photograph, didn't you, Rex? I did. I took a photograph on my mobile phone. It was just of the petrol station. It was a kind of joke. And police reconstructions at the scene suggest that this photograph is actually a vital piece of evidence. That's right. The police believe that this photograph captures the moment that Saskia was abducted. Mm. Can we bring it on screen, please? Thank you. Now, talk us through the photograph, Rex. Well, you can see for yourself, to the right of the picture are the petrol pumps uh, in the centre of the shop and its entrance. It's partially obscured by a red van. Yes, but if you look closely, you can make out five separate dots. Both I and the police believe those dots to be people. And which one is Saskia? 
Well, as you say, the dots are partially obscured by the red van, but I think this one here on the far left, mm. just at the entrance of the shop, that's Saskia. Is she alone? That's the question, Jean-Pierre. Uh, there's a black dot here and a lighter one to the right. Either of these people could be with her or just other customers. What do the police say? The police forensic department say that the picture is too low resolution for them to be certain. They don't like to speculate, although they can confirm the time it was taken. And what about you, Rex? What do you think? I believe that either of these two dots, these two men, is Saskia's kidnapper. One, or maybe even both. So why do you say men, Rex? Couldn't it be a woman? Well, they're taller than Saskia for a start. Oh, yes, but... but... The fact is that in 99 times out of 100 abductions, the perpetrator is a male. Well, why do you think this man, or men, chose to abduct Saskia? I don't know. She had no money on her. Her family aren't rich. She was beautiful. I mean, I think so. But she didn't particularly stand out in a crowd. I believe it must have been random. I have no witnesses come forward. Back in 2002, there was a local media campaign as well as an extensive search of the area. The police were able to get in contact with seven people and families that had been at the petrol station at the correct time. And did any of them see her? There were two specific sightings apart from the staff at the petrol station. Now, who were they? There was a travelling salesman from Nice. He said he saw Saskia by the newspaper stand. And there was also a woman from Dijon who was with her two children and said that Saskia approached her asking for change. And did either of them see Saskia leave or anyone follow her? No. And there wasn't any CCTV at the petrol station? There would have been at any other time, but unfortunately it had been broken the week previously. So nothing was recorded? That's correct. Hmm. Now, I have to ask, Rex, it's been eight years since Saskia's disappearance. Why now? Why this campaign now? I have to know. I can't tell you what it's like, being the one left behind. All you have is questions. Do you have any hope that Saskia will reappear, that she's still alive? Yes, of course. There's always hope. But why now? I suppose you could say that this is my homage to her. And do you have any words for the man or men that abducted her, if they're watching her? Yes, I do. I don't know who you are. I don't care. I'm not interested in revenge or getting sent to prison. I just want to know. If you are out there, please get in touch. By email, phone, whatever. I just want to know what has happened to Saskia. Well, thank you for coming in today, Rex. I uh, wish you luck with your search. Thank you, Rebecca. If you at home have... Uh... My name is Raymond Lamorne. I'm 44 years old and I live in Autun, just outside Dijon. Eight years ago, I committed the perfect crime. I always find it difficult to work out where it began exactly, but if I'm pushed, I would say that it began a long time ago, right back with my first memory. I'm six and staying at my uncle's in Dijon. My uncle lives on the third floor and has gone out shopping. I stand in the balcony, looking down at the pavement below. I stand for about an hour and think about jumping. I climb over the rail and let my legs dangle. It's summer, and the sun is fat and shiny in the bright blue sky. I know I shouldn't jump. I'm small, but I have heard of gravity. I know my uncle would be cross and that God would not be happy either. But I see the possibility. I feel it. I know, young as I am, that it is absolutely possible to jump. All I have to do is choose. It was 20 years before a moment like that occurred again. Dad? By now I'm married with two daughters. I have a house. I'm a science teacher at the local school. From all outward appearances, I'm a normal man. Nobody special. Dad? I'm out walking by the canal with my youngest, Denise. It's another sunny day. Dad? What is it, sweetheart? Why is the sky blue? <laughs> Good question. Have you heard of the spectrum? No. You know a rainbow? Of course. Well, the spectrum is all the colours of the rainbow. Spectrum? That's right. And blue is the colour of the spectrum that we can see most easily, and... What was that? Help! Denise, did you hear that? Is it coming from? Look, Dad. There's a girl in the canal. She can't swim. She's drowning. Right, wait here. Don't move. <laughs> funny. I did 
didn't even think about it. Almost all our actions, all of our true actions, are unconscious. To be good because you've been told is one thing. To be good naturally is completely different. You're OK. Don't, don't fight. You're OK. Come along then. A perfectly good act. Saving a little girl's life. But as my clothes dry out in the sunshine and we walk back towards home, I ask myself a question. The central question of my life. If I'm capable of something perfectly good, am I also capable of something perfectly evil? Every true act is unconscious. I don't even remember ordering the extra chloroform from a chemistry class. I kept it in a green jar. I put it in the garage, tried to forget about it, but I couldn't. It burnt a hole in my mind. I didn't understand myself. What was it for? What possible purpose had I taken it for? I told myself it was an experiment. Yes, just an experiment. And like all great scientists from every age, the only honest thing to do was test it on myself. What are you doing, Dad? What? What? Why are you on the floor? I, th I don't know. Um, what? Uh, what time is it? It's ten past six. Ten past six? That means... That means I was out for 18 minutes. Uh, not enough. Oh. Are you feeling all right? Yes, yes, I'm, I'm fine. Uh, I was just taking a nap. <laughs> You're totally weird. I wish you wouldn't talk like that, Denise. Were you looking for me? I have to do this project about family for school. I need pictures. I found this one of a boy with his arm in a sling, but mm. I don't know who it is. Let me see. <laughs> well, well, look at that. I haven't seen that picture for a decade or more. Who is it? It's me, of course. Is it? Amazing. Why was your arm in a plaster? Have I never told you about when I jumped out of Uncle Paul's third floor window? You what? Hmm. Another time, maybe. Uh, I need to get back to work. You're a mental dad. A total mental. Now I was two different people. One was the man that the world knew, Raymond Lamorne, family man and teacher. The other only I was aware of, the man who sat in his car and played a game against himself, always testing, always pushing forward with inexorable logic towards a final act of evil. It was intoxicating. I can't describe it. Dad! Denise, I'll be late for work. Dad! What is it? Are you having an affair? What? Don't look so shocked, Dad. <laughs> Plenty of guys your age do. It's OK. Denise! I won't tell. Are you serious? Come on, Dad. You're always out nowadays. When I ask Mum, she always says you're working late at school. But I've seen your mileometer. What? The dial that says how many miles you've done. You're doing hundreds of miles a week. Don't pretend, Dad. I'm not an idiot. Obviously not. So? So, ask me no questions, Denise. I'll tell you no lies. I knew it. I knew it. Is she very beautiful? Is it Mademoiselle Sachs who teaches music? Bye-bye, Denise. I don't know what inspiration led me to think of a petrol station. I don't know why my victim had to be a female. Perhaps because I'd saved that little girl. A life for a life. It made a kind of sense. So... A woman, but not a prostitute or a down and out. No, she had to be a thinking, intelligent woman. A young mother would be ideal. A woman who would fully understand what was happening to her. Only with intelligence would the game have any value. Again, I don't know why. Unconscious choices all of course, I made mistakes. Excuse me? Yes? 
I wonder if you could assist me. I need to attach my trailer. So what? Well, it's very heavy. I need a helping hand. <sighs> Are you joking? No, no, it's just over there. Well, why are you asking me? Why don't you ask one of the staff? Oh, yes. Of course. Uh, sorry to have to Freak. I made many mistakes. Excuse me, madam. Could I ask you to give me a hand for a moment? Me? It won't take a minute. I just need to attach my trailer. Well, I'll get my husband. Rolf! I tried everything. It'll only take a minute. OK. My car's just over there. So where's the trailer? Oh, yes, sorry. I should have explained. It's over by the pumps. Well, shall I just meet you over there? Yeah, of course. Or you could just hop in. That'll be quicker. That's all right. I think I'll walk. I was exhaustive in my search for the perfect way in which to entice my victim into my car. Nothing seemed to work. At one point, I actually despaired of ever finding the solution. I don't know what angel came and whispered in my ear. <laughs> the answer when it came was so simple. So simple and obvious. Uh, now I had everything perfectly in place. All I needed was my perfect victim. But as it turned out, Despite my intricate planning and rehearsals, she found me. I didn't have to do a thing. Excuse me? Yes? Sorry, I think you dropped this. Oh, yes, thanks. <laughs> oh, very clumsy. It's the arm. Oh, do you want me to put the coins in for you? That would be great. Oh, no problem. Uh, what do you want? Uh, just an orange juice, thanks. Here you go. Oh, you're very kind. Oh, forget it. I know how it is. I fell off a wall when I was 12 and broke my arm in three places. Ouch. It's such a pain to have to wear a sling, isn't it? I couldn't do anything. I was always dropping things. <laughs> I know what you mean. Well, you'd think one arm would be enough. I mean, one for work and one spare. But apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How did you break it? Oh, it's stupid. Oh, I won't tell anyone. <sighs> I fell out of a window. <laughs> Amazing. No, not especially. I was a fool. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, you're all right now. Do you need anything else? No, I'm fine, thank you. Well, I hope your arm gets better soon. <laughs> well, well, there is one more thing, actually. Oh, yes? Uh, just a small thing. You've already been too kind, but it, it wouldn't take a minute. Sure. I just have to grab a beer for my boyfriend. Shall I get you by the door? Absolutely. I won't be a second. Perfect. Nice to hear your voice again. So how are you, Rex? I'm okay. Are you? Yeah. I thought you were very good on journal. Did you? I thought I was frowning too much. <laughs> Not at all. You were excellent. Very clear and compelling. Well, I just hope that it helps. How's the rest of the campaign going? Well, it's only been a month. Has it? Feels like longer. Tell me about it. Has there been no response? Oh, there's been lots of response. Most of it crazy. Really? Yesterday I had an email from someone calling themselves Sakya. It's probably just a kid having a laugh. The day before I had one that was eight pages long, describing in pornographic detail Saskia's time in a brothel in Nice. Oh, no. Well, that's not the worst of it. I had a phone call from a clairvoyant in Autun who predicted I'd see Saskia the next day. 
What's that? Was a week ago now. Rex, it's in nothing positive. There's a news magazine in Paris that wants to run a cover story, offering a lot of money too. Well, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, it would be, but they only want to run it when Saskia's found. Oh. Yeah. Well, you mustn't give up hope. I never have. I miss you, Rex. Did you hear me? I miss you too. I've done it again, haven't I? I promised I wouldn't do this to myself. Do you want to meet up? Just a coffee or something? Um, no, Rex. We said we wouldn't until we... Yeah. We should stick to the plan. Sorry, Lenny. No, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have called. I told you I was an idiot. It's totally fine. I was going to write to you anyway. Were you? I was going to write you a letter. A letter? You, you could just email me. I prefer to write a letter. Call me old-fashioned. You're old-fashioned. Funny girl. <laughs> I hate that we have to do this. It's still the best. You know it is. Do I? You can't go on like this. We can't go on. If you don't find out what happened, we'll never be free. You're right. No, I know I am. You always are. It's a very irritating trait. I'm sorry, Rex. Don't be sorry. <sighs> Bye, then. Bye. 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 Hi, Rex. Yeah? You know I'll wait for you, don't you? You know I'll wait. As long as it takes. How long have you been sitting there? <laughs> You're not as funny as you think you are. How long have you been there? You know I'm always here. No. Don't turn around. Stand absolutely still. If you turn around, you know what will happen. You'll disappear? Exactly. I'm like one of those Irish fairies, leprechauns or whatever. Saskia. Don't look, Rex. Was that her? Who? You know who. Lenica, your fiancé. You shouldn't listen to other people's conversations. Well, you were talking about me. No, we weren't. We were talking about a completely different Saskia. <laughs> Oh, you were always a bad liar, Rex. And you were always friend. a vain, spoiled little witch, Saskia Elvis. Slut. Don't look. Don't look. Oh, God, you are so <laughs> irritating, Saskia. You make me want to spit. I'm oh, charming. <sighs> she must love you a lot, this Lenica. Oh, yes, why'd you say that? I don't know if I could love a man who spends his whole time thinking about another woman. I don't spend the whole time thinking about you. No? Who are you talking to now, then? A figment of my imagination. A phantom, a dream. Do you dream about me a lot, Rex? You're so sad, Rex Hoffman. You look so sad. I, I don't remember you being this sad. Why are you still looking for me? I said I wouldn't leave you. It's been eight years. I made a promise. <laughs> I think you still love me. You do, don't you, Rex? You still love me. No. You do? No, I don't. I hate you. <laughs> no, I do. I hate you. I hate you with all my body. With every bone, every skin cell. Oh, stop it, Rex. I hate you. I hate you for leaving me. I hate you for leaving me standing there at that petrol station waiting. I hate you for all the sleepless nights and the worry and the pain. The pain at the bottom of my stomach that never goes away. I hate you because whatever happened, whatever actually happened to you that day, it feels like you're punishing me for something. Something I didn't even know I did. What did I do? Eight years, Saskia. It's been eight years. Isn't that long enough? Haven't I suffered enough? Why do you have to keep hurting Rex. me? But most of all, I hate you because... Yes, yes, I still love you. I love you and you never say goodbye. Saskia? Sask... Where have you... Damn. Damn you. My name is Rex Hoffman. 
I'm 38 years old and I live in Amsterdam. Eight years ago, my girlfriend, Saskia Elvest, disappeared. This morning, I saw some words on a car window in the street, scrawled in the dust. The words read, Rex, you're so sweet. Love, S. S? S for Saskia? Is it her? Could it be? I see things all the time, clues. I see her date of birth in a friend's phone number. I see her mobile number in a lorry's registration. I see her name jumbled in a crossword. I dreamt of a colleague's baby for a week. It was only later I realised the baby was born on the same day as Saskia's disappearance. And once I saw a mouse in a pet shop. The mouse had her eyes. It had its paws against the window and it looked at me so long and so searchingly that I physically hurt. Stupid. All these clues, these messages from God or the universe or fate or whatever, they don't add up. I can't see the pattern. Maybe if I could work out the pattern, I would find her. And I would be free. <laughs> Something else written in the dust. When I write this, it shows the pain. Oh, Saskia. What is it? What are you trying to tell me? Excuse me. Hello. Excuse me. Are you Rex Hoffman? Do I know you? You speak French? Yes. My name is Raymond Lamont. Have we met? Your face is familiar somehow. I saw you on the television. Really? Do you know something about Saskia's disappearance? Do you know something about Saskia? Yes. What do you know? I know everything, Mr. Hoffman. Is she dead? Yes. 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 Brother, you get off! I'm gonna kill you! Frank! What did you do to her? Get off! What did she do? Why her? What did she ever do to you? What did tell I'm gonna kill you! Brother! <laughs> You can kill me. You have the right. But I warn you, if you kill me, you'll never know what happened. Where is she? I want to tell Where you. is she? People are staring, Rex. Can, can I call you Rex? I want to talk to you. Let me get up and we can talk in my car. Here you are. What is this? Proof. Don't you recognise them? Saskia's car key? Yes. Saskia? I'm afraid that... No, I can't let you have them. I'm sure you understand. What did you do to her? I came here to tell you. So tell me. Well, there's only one way I can tell you. By having you undergo the same thing. You'll kill me too? Yes. You're crazy. Well, that's irrelevant. I'm afraid I can't offer it any other way. I have a life. I have a job, a wife and two children and a house. I have a life and I want that life to continue. You can go away now if you wish. You can take my license number. I've told you my real name. But there's no evidence against me. No one would be able to find a thing. And if you tell the police, I'll never talk. I could kill you. Yes, that's the risk I'm taking. And I recognise your right to do that. You recognise my right? What language are you speaking? You're a monster. Well, as I say, I recognise your right to do that, but your appearance on television and your campaign has convinced me you'll do anything to find out what happened to your girlfriend. I'm giving you an opportunity. An opportunity? Yes. Now, any deviation from what I tell you, any hint of a deviation, and my offer is terminated. I'm driving back to France now. This is your chance. Can I make a phone call? No. No, you have to decide now. I can't wait. I'm going with you. Do you have your ID? Yes. Good. Then we can go. Uh, sit back and relax. We have a long drive ahead of us. Come back. 
Come back, Rex. Please, Rex. So Please come back. Wait. Rex! No, I'm here. South. Wait. Hold on, please. No. No. Rex. Rex. Please. No. We can't, Mr. Hoffman. Rex. 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 What, Rex. What's the ma- What happened? You were having a nightmare. Was I? Take a breath. You're shaking. What's happening? No. You're just confused. Look out the window. Calm yourself. The rain's too thick. I can't see. Where are we? Look again. Don't you recognise it? I can't make anything out. The Otter Route de Soleil. Though the name's hardly fitting tonight. What time is it? Uh, coming up to eight o'clock. You've been asleep for hours. We're almost there. Have you got a cigarette? No, I don't smoke. And there are some sandwiches in the glove compartment if you want one. There are two cheese and one with ham, also a couple of oranges. Go ahead, help yourself. I've already eaten. Did you make this? My daughter did. You have a daughter? Yeah, I have two. Gabrielle and Denise. What kind of monster are you? How can you sit there and offer me sandwiches? Sit there and tell me about your daughters? What kind of person has the mind to put together a packed lunch and drive so calmly? How sick are you? I'm just a man. I'm the same as you and everyone else, I expect. Well, the difference, perhaps, is that I see the possibility of doing the other thing. Do you ask me how I can sit here and offer you a sandwich? I reply, because it's possible. I thought about what you would look like. For years and years, I've thought about what kind of man you might be. You are not what I expected. (laughs) What did you expect? I don't know now. Hmm. Look ahead. What? It's the petrol station. We've arrived. There we are. Have you been back many times? No. Only once for the police reconstruction. Mm. Has it changed? It's just a petrol station. If you reach under your seat, you'll find a thermos flask. Uh, Please, could you take it out? Yeah, thank you. Drink. What's in it? Something to make you sleep. It'll take a few minutes to work. What if I say no? You've come a long way now, Rex. Of course, you could turn back. That's your choice. But you'll never find out what happened to your friend. I loved her. Yeah, as you say, drink. I don't know if I can. You can. It's easy. I don't... I don't drink, and I'll tell you what happened. Give it to me. just coffee. Yeah, coffee masks the taste. It's very sweet. Drink it all. There. Good man. Right. Now, tell me. My name is Raymond Lamorne. I'm 44 years old and I live in Autun, just outside Dijon. Eight years ago, I committed the perfect crime. You still with me, Rex? Yes. How are you feeling? You feel sleepy? I don't... I think... I think I'm going to be sick. Oh, please don't be sick, Rex. It would be tiresome to have to go through all this again. I need some air. I can't breathe. Oh, no, don't get out of the car, Rex. I have to. I can't stay in here. I need to... Rex, come back. Rex. Rex. Uh, Saskia, is that you? You know it is. Sask. No, don't turn around. What am I doing here? Don't ask me. I told you to stop ages ago. It's too late. It's not, Rex. You can still turn back if you want. Can I? You know you can. And then what do I do, Sask? If I don't go with him, I'll never know. What does it matter? I don't know now. 
thought I knew, but now I'm not so sure. I'm gone. That's all there is to it. Why did this happen to us, Saskia? I don't understand why. It wasn't your fault, Rex. I let you go. You didn't do anything wrong. I let you go off on your own, and the universe punished me. Punished both of us. Stupid boy. You know it doesn't work like that. I loved you so much. I didn't know. I didn't know until you were gone. I'm so sorry, Sam. Don't be sorry. Listen to me. You can still make it right. You can live. That's all you need to do. In my head. Come on, Rex, you have to get out it's now. My head is fuzzy. You have to go or you'll die, Rex. I can't feel my face. You will die, and for what? My legs are going. Don't throw it all away because of me. It feels like I'm falling. I'm falling. Oh. Oh. Go home, Rex. I don't know if I can. I don't... Stand up. If... You have to get out of here. Help me, sir. I'm so scared. So concentrate. You have to concentrate. Wait. The, the coins... What coins? One, two, three, four, eighth post from the left. What are you doing? Wait a second. Look. They're still here. Don't you remember the coins we buried? One coin each. To show our love for each other. They're still here. You're ridiculous, Rex Hoffman. The coins are still here and so is our love. I've tried to bury it, tried to carry on, but it's still there. Do you see? Oh, Rex. Rex, come back. You must get back to the I have time. to go, Sash. I have to go. I'm ready. Sad? Are you there? I can't see, can't see anything. What is this place? Ow! Oh, my head. What's going on? Okay, keep calm. My name is Rex Hoffman. My name is Rex Hoffman. My name is Rex Hoffman. Who's that? Is that you? Hello, Rex Hoffman. Is it really you? What are you expecting? Someone else? Where are we? Don't you know? It's pitch black. I can't see anything. Oh, come on, Rex. You can do better than that. Okay, well, I can still breathe. Yes. What's that smell? That's it. You're getting warmer. Something familiar. I can't quite work it out. Is it soil? Earth. Earth? So that means we must... Yes. No. No, it's not. Breathe. It's not possible. Rex, just it can't breathe. Be. It's a joke. You have to help. Breathe. Help us! Help! Help! No use, Rex. There's nobody there. I need to say the word. I need to say the word. I think I just need to say the words out loud. I am lying in a box underground in the earth. I have been buried alive. It's okay, Rex. Just breathe. <laughs> breathe in and out. This is where you've been all this time. It's been very lonely no, without you. can't be. It's not possible. Poor Rex. I don't believe it. I won't believe it. I can't. <laughs> Take my hand, Rex. That's it. That's it. Let's get off this yourself. It's all right, Rex. Everything is all right. I found you. <laughs> you did. I promised I would, didn't I? Didn't I? <laughs> Let's play the game. Whatever you like. Lena Cavan Boston. I'm 32 years old and I live in Amsterdam. Eight days ago, my fiance Rex Hoffman disappeared. 
tried his bell every day. I've tried it every day, but there's been no response. I've called the editor of his newspaper, his parents, his next-door neighbour. None of them have heard anything at all from him. I try his bell, but I know he's not there. I have a key and I've been inside to look, but I try the bell first, just in case. I'm going to look again, although I have no hope of finding him in his flat. Last week I received a letter. He promised me he would write to me, and he did. I will not stop coming here. I will not give up. Rex said he would come back and we would be married. He promised. He always keeps his promises. So, animals beginning with M. Monkey. Marmoset. Mm, nice one. Mm-hmm. Mouse. Moose. Magpie. Monster. Don't have a monster. <laughs> Just not an animal. Not mean monsters in the zoo. Yeah. In The Vanishing, Rex was played by Samuel West, Saskia by Melody Grove, Lineker by Ruth Gemmel, Le Morne by Liam Brennan, Denise by Natasha Watson, Jean-Pierre Gallo and the manager were played by Robin Lang, and The Cashier and Woman by Claire Knight. The Vanishing was written by Tim Crubbe, dramatised for radio by Oliver Emanuel, and was directed in Glasgow by Kirsty Williams. <laughs>